following chalk talk is brought to you by Isolite, the emergency lighting experts. Stay educated, my friends. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our August Chalk Talk. I'm Greg Keel, Western Regional Sales Manager, and along with me, we have Matt Bird, our Eastern Regional Sales Manager. And today's topic, as you can see on the screen, is going to focus on our inverter and specifically our web monitoring features that we offer. Um, we've actually just made an update to an option that our Director of Product Development, Evan Ackman, is going to discuss in his presentation today. So thank you again for joining us, and Evan, take it away. Great. Thanks, Greg. And thank you all for joining us. As Greg mentioned, we're talking about uh, our E3 Mac inverters and really web monitoring as well as some other features today. So without further ado, we'll go right into it. So again, we're talking about really monitoring and maintenance features associated with our E3 Mac inverters today. But you know, I always like to set the stage for why we're talking about this. Why does it matter? Why is it important and why do you care? And so we'll start by talking about required system maintenance. So this is gonna be true for um, not just inverters, but also exit signs and emergency lights. So we'll talk about NFPA 101, the life safety code and what it requires the facilities team to do. Uh, we'll talk about some of the additional requirements, not just of testing, but of the documentation that's required uh, after the, the test has been completed and what the impact of self-diagnostics will be on the, uh, the obligations for the facilities team. Uh, spoiler alert, it's, it doesn't drive the, uh, the obligation down to zero. It's in order to, to get to that zero maintenance cost, you need to use uh, some more advanced technology. And that leads us into talking about web monitoring, a new feature we have, BMS integration. We'll talk a little bit about that, what it, what it means and when it'll be available. And then we'll end with support tools, how to pick between web monitoring and BMS, uh, why one may be preferable to the other in some applications or the opposite in other applications. And then we'll end with sales tools and how to get more information from us. Jumping right in, uh, as we're always talking about when we talk about emergency lighting, exit signs, inverters, we really care primarily about NFPA 101, the life safety code. And you know, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff in chapter seven about the obligations and design of these systems, but hidden there in chapter seven, part 10, uh, paragraph nine, section two, is the information that we're actually talking about today because it details the ongoing obligations that the facilities team has uh, to keep a, uh, an emergency system code compliant. And I, I put a shortened version of what it says in here. And what it says is, devices connected to or provided with a battery operated emergency illumination source shall be tested and maintained, blah, 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 monthly for 30 seconds and yearly for 90 minutes. And the, the purposes of those two tests are a couple different things. The monthly test is really just a, a nominal proof that everything is connected, that the charging and discharging circuitry work, uh, that the battery is still connected and that the lights come on sort of in a nominal sense. That's just sort of a, an audit, let's say. The yearly 90-minute test uh, is a little bit more important because what it's doing for you is uh, determining that the battery capacity is still appropriate to meet life safety code, to meet that 90 minutes that's required. And so, so it's a pretty big deal and it's pretty important that these tests are run. But Life Safety Code dictates that it's not enough to just run the test. You have to document the, uh, the output of the test. And so if you look, you know, we have a, a little white paper that we published online. I think we sent out to everybody uh, maybe a couple months ago, or maybe it was before COVID actually. Um, and it, this is really what's required for documenting uh, a test result. And it's, it's who tested it, when was the test run, what type of test was it? Was it one of those really short duration tests? Was it a long duration test? What fixture was tested? So some, you know, some reasonable nomenclature that would allow you to say, oh, this one is this fixture over here. And then just the status of whether it passed and failed. And really the fire marshal can come in at any point in time and ask for the documentation for the life safety system to be furnished. And if the facilities team can't furnish that, a fine will be levi levied on a uh, per, uh, per point basis. So the fines can get pretty exorbitant. What this means though is self-diagnostics can stop you from having to go initiate those tests. So those 30 second tests and those 90 minute tests, the self-diagnostic uh, exit sign, emergency light or inverter um, can 
can run those tests on schedule for you. But the question then becomes, well, how do you, how do you get that information and store it? And so for simple systems that are just self-diagnostic, someone is still going to have to go around and look at all the little self-diagnostic LEDs and say, oh, that, that passed, that passed, that passed. Ooh, that failed. We should do something about that. And so even though you have self-diagnostics, it doesn't drive those maintenance costs all the way down to zero. It drives them down to a slightly smaller number, but you're still going to have to go pretty frequently on the scavenger hunt to prove that everything is good. And so it doesn't get to zero, and that's a key. But the web monitoring features of the E3 Mac inverter do. So the nice thing about web monitoring is it becomes a self-documenting system in addition to it being uh, obviously a self-diagnostic system. It's really that extra step that reduces the maintenance cost for the facilities team and it just drives it down to zero. You, it'll, it'll do everything for you. And what's nice is, is if you have any E3 Mac inverter, it just comes with it. So if you plug in an ethernet cable to the back of your E3 Mac inverter, you can go to our uh, web monitoring portal that's linked to from our webpage. And what you see on the right there is what you're going to see. And the feature set of it is pretty cool. It's basically everything that the inverter is capable of uh, reporting about the real-time status, uh, reporting about the historical status of the device, or can be configured usually through the front panel, can also be configured and viewed through this web monitoring portal. So from a real-time perspective, that's things like input and output voltage, input and output current, the actual connected load uh, attached to the device, some information about the batteries and their health, the temperature of the system, the uptime, how many hours the inverter has actually been active, if there's any current alarms like a circuit breaker tripped. Um, anything that could be reported in real time can also be reported uh, up to this web portal. But even more than that, the historical information is where this really becomes powerful. And so I, I've kind of put the scare quotes around uh, the word events. Events are really anything that someone might have to know about and also care about the duration and starting and ending uh, conditions of it. So events include things like uh, power outages. It also includes the tests as listed below. Um, any alarm while it's active would be considered an event. Uh, so all of that can be like looked at and viewed at a start and end time just to see exactly what's happened throughout the entire history of the device. And then as I mentioned, things like scheduling tests, uh, configuring the alarms, like what the threshold will be if the load changes to when you have to, to alert the user or to trigger an alarm in the web monitoring portal or on the inverter itself. And then configuring who's gonna get automated text message and email alerts and when they would actually get them. All that is done through the web monitoring portal. So you could see here, just you could see that every alarm that the device knows about, you can actually see through this portal. And it's a, it's a ton of them. There's a bunch of standard alarms that you see uh, sort of in this, the top section. And then the programmable faults that you would have configured through this portal uh, down below. In this instance, everything is, is hunky-dory and okay. But the real-time information is uh, not really the most important thing, especially as it relates to what we're talking about here today. What's important is the historical log. So when the fire marshal walks in, you can furnish that documentation. And yeah, looking at it through the web portal is nice. You can get you know, start conditions, end conditions. If you look on the bottom of that left-hand picture, you can actually see that those events will be listed on a calendar, like you're looking at Outlook, when a test was, when there was an error, when something happened. Uh, the system's a little bit goofy because it's in our manufacturing facility and it has a lot of events and tests because we, we use it a lot. Um, but even more important than the web portal, is the fact that you can actually export all that information to Excel, to a PDF, to a comma separated value file. And then that would be the thing that you would print and hand over to the fire marshal. So without any intervention, uh, you know, for the previous two years when no one really cared about the, uh, the inverter system, uh, when the fire marshal walks in, you can say, well, here's the entire history of the uh, events of this device proving that it has been okay. So it's really, that's how we drive those costs down to zero. 
The other thing that I like to touch on when we talk about web monitoring is what does it take to actually get the device online? I think there's a little bit of agita when people say, you know, it's, it utilizes a cloud service that, oh, they're going to have to get, you know, the IT time, IT team to uh, open up firewall ports and, and do a bunch of configuration. That's actually not the case. Um, as I mentioned before, this feature is included with every E3 Mac. And so what you see on the right hand side there is the back of the user interface, what we call the MMI. And on the right side of that picture, you can see uh, the little ethernet port. That's gonna be there for every E3 Mac inverter we've ever shipped. And if you go and land an ethernet cable on there that has access to the internet, that's really all that it takes to get this thing online. The E3 Mac utilizes DHCP, so you don't have to do any weird like network e configuration. All connections are outbound, so there's no server on this device. It makes a connection out to the internet like a, like a user in the building would when they're going to a web page. And then all communication happens over that socket. So the nice thing about outbound communications is there's no firewall obligations uh, that the IT team has to have. Uh, there's no VLAN requirements. There's not a lot of traffic in here. It doesn't go and try to find stuff on subnets. So very minimal IT interaction. It's really as simple as get an ethernet cable that has access to the internet and you're going to be good to go. The feature will just work. Another thing that we've been asked for uh, a lot historically is something a little bit more uh, standards compliant or allowing people to utilize the BMS system that's in place in a facility already. And I'm excited to announce today that we have done that. Uh, we initially thought that we were going to repurpose that Ethernet port that's on the back of our user interface and just have a direct BACnet IP uh, integration, but we've actually taken a little bit of a different strategy. We've partnered with Sierra Monitoring and their field server product. Um, Sierra Monitoring has uh, implemented some custom firmware so that it knows how to talk to an inverter. And then through this field server device, we actually get compliance with uh, a bunch of different protocols. So BACnet MSTP, BACnet IP, Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP. Um, it, it's pretty flexible. And what goes out through that, that BMS interface is all of the information that you saw a couple slides ago about you know, that real-time information, any alerts that are currently happening, the events uh, that are happening to the system. So all that information can be now passed over to the BMS system that is already there. And this isn't like a, a super future thing. I guess it's technically a future thing because it's five days away, but this will be available uh, as of September 1st. You'll start to see the BI option show up in the E3 Mac model numbers. Um, one thing to note is it can actually be retroactively installed because of the strategy that we've taken of utilizing that field server um, appliance. Uh, as a part of the inverter. It can be done on units that have been installed. Uh, we're gonna ask that a field tech help with that because there's some firmware stuff that needs to happen. But if you have a job that was supplied previously that they would like to integrate to a BMS system, we can actually do that. Uh, we'll have to charge you for the, the little box, but we can, we can absolutely retrofit it. The PICS will be available on the website, as will the point list. So for those of you who don't know, the PICS is the statement that most building owners would want to prove that it's like properly compliant with uh, the standards uh, of the BMS systems. And the point list describes exactly the information and the format of that information that's going to go over to the BMS system. It's what the, uh, the facilities team would need to properly integrate it. So all that stuff will be available on the website uh, pretty soon. Uh, the last thing I want to leave you with here is kind of a, a pro-con comparison of these two different technologies, why web monitoring, why BMS. Uh, the web monitoring is really nice because it's like an all-in-one managed solution. We control it. Um, the user interface always is optimized for the features of the E3 Mac. And as we come up with more stuff, we can change that live. So that's kind of nice. There's no on-premises infrastructure that's required. So you know, I, I've often called this like the Chick-fil-A problem, but in reality, the more agnostic name would be the, uh, like the freestanding retail problem in that if you have like a freestanding retail or restaurant that has obligations for life safety code, but doesn't have an on-site facilities team, they're going to have internet at that site. If you can get the inverter on the internet, then a centralized facilities team can go and manage that without having to have like an on-site BMS or something, um, 
something local to it. You can manage it from anywhere. So as long as you've got an internet connection, you can go and hit the inverter. And maybe the most important thing is it's free. It costs you nothing. It comes with every inverter that we've ever shipped and it will continue to come with every inverter that we ship into the future. So you don't really have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. If you want it after the fact, you can do it. The only downside is really that it does require an internet connection. That can be problematic for um, some applications where you know either the inverter is very far from an IDF or an IT closet to get an ethernet connection down to it or if there's like physical air gapping requirements because of the security required in a building that that can be problematic the nice thing about the BMS is there are non ethernet options so for long distances or facilities that don't allow like unsanctioned devices to be on their network um, Backnet MSTP and Modbus RTU are two-wire RS-485 type protocols. So they, they don't necessarily hit the network. So that's pretty flexible and nice uh, for the BMS side. It's industry standard. So it's going to work with Niagara, Distech, whoever you're utilizing as your BMS provider, it's going to work with it. It doesn't necessarily require any IT interaction. We think that the web monitoring is pretty minimal and the get an, uh, an Ethernet connection to it and it's good to go. But the BMS side has no IT interaction interaction if you're using those uh, those two wire type solutions. The downsides are it is limited to the UI provided by the BMS, which is not as controlled. So you may not properly utilize all the features. It's really down to the facilities team to get that done right. And it does cost money. It is a paid option. Um, it's not a, not a lot of money, but it does cost extra as compared to the web monitoring, which is free. But keep in mind, the web monitoring doesn't go away ever. So every unit that we ship will have it. Um, the BMS is just extra. So you could do both at the same time uh, and you can always fall back to just using web monitoring. In terms of what's available, the spec sheets will be updated in the next week or two. Uh, the picks and the point list will also be posted in the next week or two. You'll see that and we'll include it as a follow-up to this, uh, this webinar. As always, you're going to get a copy of the slide deck, a version of it uh, that's appropriate for internal agency consumption. We'll add some pricing information to that, uh, as well as the, uh, the audio video of me giving the presentation. So you can go and, uh, and look at this uh, at any time in the future. And this is kind of a quick blitzkrieg through, uh, you know, fairly complicated features that have a lot of, um, a lot of power and capability. If you guys are interested in learning more or you want to schedule something with your internal teams or your customers, um, you know, we're happy to do it. Again, my name is Evan Ackman. There's my uh, several year old headshot sitting right there. Greg and Matt are on the call. You know those guys if, uh, if you're one of our agents. Please don't hesitate to reach out at any time uh, about anything. If, even if it's not related to uh, the BMS or web monitoring features, if you want to talk exit signs, emergency drivers, inverters, uh, uh, startup, we're, we're here for you. We certainly appreciate everything that you guys do, and we appreciate your time today. I hope this was uh, pretty helpful for you. I hope that you're excited about the new features. Um, with that said, appreciate your time. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.